Thank you, Adam. Um, thanks to the organizers for inviting me. It's always a pleasure to be back uh, in Montreal. Uh, giving a survey talk, not done this very many times, um, I maybe should apologize in advance for anyone's work that I don't mention, especially people who are in this room. Um, it's only so many minutes in an hour. Uh, so, I mean, I was asked to give a, a survey about kind of applications of orderability to three-dimensional topology um, and kind of cut this down to something I can talk about um, in this setting, I, I'm gonna focus in on the following, following question. So the setting for today, I'm gonna be interested in a three manifold that'll be orientable, uh, irreducible, that uh, means every embedded two sphere bounds a ball. So it's fundamental group is not a free product. Um, um, it's going to be closed. And uh, moreover, I'm going to assume that there's a no Z plus Zs in its fundamental group. Um, so it's a toroidal. Uh, and in addition, um, let's, as we understand orderability of finite groups, um, let's assume that pi 1m is infinite. And so with this list of hypotheses by the work of Thurston and Perlman, um, we know this means our manifold M is hyperbolic. So it has a uh, Ramani metric of constant curvature minus one. You know, this implies many things like pi 1M is torsion free. Um, pi 1M is residually finite. I mean, it's really a group of matrices uh, two by two matrices. Um, and so it's a very concrete and some analytic object. Um, and so the question that I want to address today is when is the fundamental group of this manifold uh, left orderable? And I, mean, I should point out that the fact that I'm assuming there's no Z plus Zs means I'm assuming there's no essential tori. So the stuff that Cameron told us about on Monday with the set of sort of detected LO slopes and so on, that story will not be part of, of, of what I'm gonna talk about today. I'm gonna to talk about, you know, these kind of irreducible pieces. Um, and as has already been mentioned, um, there's a conjecture uh, for when this is, this is the L space conjecture, uh, which says that fundamental group of M here is left orderable. <laughs> If and only if there's some non-trivial Hagar for homology, whatever that is. Um, uh, if and only if uh, the manifold emits a co-orientable population. Um, so this is the conjecture, uh, and you know the one implication we have is that co-orientable topfoliations do give rise to floor homology. Um, everything else is well conjectural. So I should say, please interrupt me with questions. My, my goal here is really to bore um, Steve and Cameron sitting there in the middle. And so I'm trying to really aim this talk at, at people from more of the kind of dynamical perspective. So I really encourage you to, to interrupt me. Um, you know, I, I am a three manifold topologist, obviously. Uh, and so um, I'll just carry on. No one, no one asks questions, but please make sure that doesn't happen. So, uh, so I'm going to be interested in um, uh, when are these left orderable, and I'm going to focus today on on constructions. So, so really, what I'm going to talk about today is constructing left orders on the fundamental group of M. Um, the proofs that we have that a certain three manifold group is not left orderable; those proofs look the same as pretty much any other proof that a group isn't left orderable, right? You, you look at the positive cone, um, you say, well, maybe this generator is positive, maybe this one is. Anyway, you do some kind of algebraic um, manipulations and eventually you find that they just it's not orderable. And that, that, I mean, of course, because it's a three manifold group, it's a very concrete object. We can solve the word problem in the group that makes that kind of a, a tractable thing to do, but there's really not to my knowledge, any sort of three manifold specific 
schools um, for showing that a group is not left orderable. Um, so I'm going to focus on the on the uh, constructing. Um, and and really the challenge to y'all out there in the audience is to find new methods uh, for constructing these, these left orders. So I'll explain the two most effective methods that we have, um, neither of which one expects will suffice to prove this conjecture. Um, and so there really needs to be some, some new ideas that I hope some, some of you will, will have. Um, again, just because I don't want to keep saying Things I, some here's some more conventions for my talk. Um, everything is orientable. I thought earlier you said it was orientable. Yeah, no, but I, I mean, like for example, my foliations are orientable, co-orientable. My actions on a space are by orientation preserving maps. Um, there'll be nothing non-orientable of any of any form, um, and everything is is orientable. No actions. Etc. foliations. Um, and uh, you know, when I talk about an action, this will implicitly mean it's non-trivial. And one of the basic results, um, Boyer, Wolfson, and Beast, is that in this setting, we can promote non-trivial actions to faithful actions. So I'm also never going to worry about whether some action is faithful, um, just that it's, it's interesting. And, and one of the reasons that we kind of, well, may need these new methods is that um, the constructions I'll tell you about, uh, the constructions you tell about, they almost all, most of the methods we know, so to use the language of the last talk, um, known methods produce uh, type two actions. Um, that is, you produce a left order from uh, homeomorphism, homomorphism, sorry, from pi 1m into homeomorphisms of the circle um, that lifts to a homeomorphism on the line. And this is, a, of course, a special class of these um, actions. Um, and uh, um, you know, given such a homomorphism, there's a cohomological obstruction to it lifting. So the OR class that lifts in H2 of MZ, this vanishes, this vanishes if and only if the action lifts. And, and so for all we know, um, you know, you could ask if this conjecture here could be strengthened. Um, pi one of M is left orderable uh, if and only if pi one of M, uh, well, I'll put it this way, embeds in this type of homeomorphism. Best of my knowledge, this is, this is conceivable. Explain what the classes. Oh, I mean, yeah, so this is the uh, so um, yeah, one one way to think about this is um, right, we have um, you know, we have looking at homeomorphisms of the circle, and we're looking at homeomorphisms of the line that are lifts of homeomorphisms of the circle. So these are just. Uh, the subset of homeomorphisms of the line that commute with, say, shift by one, translation by one. Um, and we have this short exact sequence. So in this situation, we have a homomorphism to this, um, and we want to know, does it lift to this? You end up with a cohomology class that takes values in this, um, and that's the Euler class. So, so it's like if we build the circle bundle over our manifold, um, like the flat bundle with this as the monodromy, this is just the obstruction to that bundle having a section. A great question. Other questions? So the um, kind of two main classes of tools that we have for building these orders. Uh, and 
we heard a bit about the first kind earlier in the week, um, and that's you know, coming from foliations. And so in particular, um, if we have our foliation, uh, there's actually two different one manifolds that this naturally acts on. Um, the first is the, the leaf space. So if we have this taunt foliation, it turns out that the universal cover of our manifold, um, you can look at the pre-image of the foliation upstairs. This is actually a foliation of, so the universal cover has to be R3. Um, and the foliation is a foliation by planes. So up there in the universal cover, which we could also think about hyperbolic three space, we have this foliation by planes. Um, and if we collapse each plane to a point, okay, that builds something called the leaf space. Um, and well, locally, it's a one manifold, right? Because you're, you know, it's a co-dimension one foliation. Um, and uh, not a very convincing L, I gotta say. Um, you have this leaf space, uh, which is a simply connected uh, one manifold. And I have to put the one manifold in quotes because it's usually not house Um I mean, if this was simply the real one, then there would be our order right there. But it's, it's typically not that. Um, and the other uh, way that you get an action on a one manifold is Thurston's universal circle. Um, so you get an action on, uh, which is gotten by sort of assembling the universal circles of the leaves. They all have some hyperbolic metric. Um, and so, so you get these sort of, you get these actions, not, neither of which are quite what we want. So, I mean, some special cases though, uh, you can promote these to um, a left order. Um, so, you know, if the leaf space happens to be the, real numbers, it certainly can happen. Um, it's called an R-covered foliation. There's not a lot of good ways to build R-covered foliations kind of combinatorially, so this isn't so useful. Um, you know, we get this action on the, the universal circle. So another way we can find the left order is if the oil class of this universal circle thing is zero. Um, and, uh, sorry. Um, in the first case of the leaf space. Yes. Uh, so you mentioned before that all the orders that you know come from mapping the Hogan class S1 tilde. So is there always like an action on the circle coming from the leaf? No, no. So I mean, uh, but so it's not the case that every known action of pi 1m on, a, um, on R comes from one of these. But the vast majority of our constructions produce this. I'm, I'm not aware of any. Examples where somebody has proved that there isn't such an action. Um, but yes, yeah, so in something like this, this could be a genuine, a genuine uh, thing. Um, so another case, you know, if we have this action on a circle, if this Euler class vanishes, then um, we can promote that to an action on the line. Uh, and that might seem like a mysterious kind of object. Um, but Steve Boyer and Ying Hu show that this is the same as looking at the Euler class of the tangent bundle to the foliation, right? So you have your foliation um, at each point, there's a tangent point tangent to your leaf of your foliation um, that has an Euler class and that Euler class is the same as this of this action. So this is then something you can kind of concretely, concretely compute um, in, in, many, in many cases. Um, so in particular, I mean, if it happens that this group is zero, okay, then, well, the Euler class has to vanish. Um, so, uh, in particular, if you're an integral homology sphere, by which I just mean that this is zero, um, then uh, a top foliation does give rise to a, to a left order. Yes, question? Uh, in general, the configuration of the Euler class is very hard. Uh, no, 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 well, it depends on how your foliation is given to you. Um, and, and that's actually what I wanted to talk about next. Um, so how do we actually build foliations of three manifolds? And in Tao's talk on Monday, uh, he was using branch surfaces, um, and that is indeed... Uh, but, but I'm slightly... So is the, it's co-oriented? Yes, everything's co-oriented, that's my... So the, the normal bundle is the real... 
Yes. But the tangent bundle of the three manifold is trivial. Yes. So wouldn't that imply that at least the other class of the tangent bundle of the collision must be trivial? No. No. Okay. That's simple. I mean, so so for example, right, just think of a surface cross a circle. All right. Right. So that the tangent bundle there, tangent to the leaves. Yeah. Um, the you know surface cross the circle, so you have the spoliation by surfaces cross point. Um, the oil class of that is like the oil class of the surface. Yeah. Sorry. No, no. Uh, other questions. All right. So, so how do we actually build foliations? If I'm trying to sell this as a way to build orders, um, so the main tool that one uses to uh, construct. Um, tall foliations are branch surfaces, which are like train tracks, but in, in dimension three. So they're not quite surfaces, but they have some relatively mild singularities. Oh boy. Should have practiced. Um, but anyway, uh, these can be used to describe, describe the foliation. Um, and in particular, to build foliations on families of manifolds. So, uh, especially the work of Roberts in the 90s, um, looking at foliations on Dane fillings of fibered manifolds, um, work of Tao Li, in particular, the notion of a laminar branch surface. Laminar. So, this, uh, this object is a kind of combinatorial thing sitting in your manifold. Um, and Tao shows that there's a combinatorial criteria on that, which guarantees that it carries, um, that it carries a lamination, uh, which then if the complementary regions are nice, which again is not hard, which is not hard to check, um, then you can extend that to a foliation. So, I mean, one thing that's very different um, in the case of, you know, we're doing dealing with a world of train tracks, Right, if I want to make this carry some kind of lamination like thing, I take my little neighborhood. Right, you want to make this carry a lamination. Well, I mean, there's no reason to think there's a transverse measure on this, but that doesn't stop anyone. You know, you just put your sort of canter set cross section in here and extend it into all the adjacent ones. It's a canter set, we can break it up how, kind of however we want. Now, that doesn't work in. In for branch surfaces, because this sort of triple point thing, there's some holonomy issue there that in general can't resolve. Um, but uh, this, this combinatorial condition guarantees that you can. Um, so, for example, uh, what's a good example of the kind of, of results that people prove? So, recent work of Delman and Roberts um, shows that if we look at uh, Look at Dane surgery on any. Oh, sorry, I need the word non trivial in here somehow. So, non trivial Dane surgery on an alternating knot uh, has a top foliation. All right, so you draw, draw any knot diagram where you keep alternating between going over and under. Like, I don't know, we can draw the figure eight knot. I can't draw very many knots, to be honest. So, probably something like this. Um, with this Dane surgery thing, where we remove a little neighborhood of our knot, then we stitch that back in by some different map. Um, such things are parameterized by the, I have to draw this for construction. All right, so we, so we look at the exterior of our knot here. This is S3 minus open neighborhood of the, of the knot. And um, then, you know, I have my neighborhood over here. I took it out and I set it on, on the side table or something. Um, and then I just glue the boundary of this manifold, which is a torus to this thing. I get a new manifold. Um, I mean, in terms of which manifolds I get, that just depends on where this curve goes 
on the pores here, right? This is like adding a this disk is like adding a relation, right? So if you wanted to write the, the fundamental group of this, it'd be the fundamental group of the exterior with one more relation coming from this curve. Um, and so this curve here, this could be parameterized um, by a pair of well, pair of integers, usually written as a fraction for whatever reason, um, where you go um, sort of p times around in the meridian direction and q times around in the line. So if I take any alternating knot like this one and do any gain surgery, there are infinitely many, except the trivial one, which gives me S3 back, um, then it always has a top formation. I assume you're Sorry? Yeah, sure. Oh, uh, no, I probably should be sorry. Yeah, well, let's, let's not do the two-end torus knot. Uh, otherwise, it, yeah, absolutely. You have essential, essential annuli that turn into, uh, yeah, connect some one spaces. Right, so implicitly, I guess I'm using my hypotheses. I'm talking about hyperbolic mountains. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, and uh, so, so we have lots of then tools for constructing these top foliations, uh, but unfortunately, um, to exploit, um, you know, to get a left order out of it, we need something about the, um, we have the oil class vanish, and it just doesn't most of the time in these constructions. So, um, so, in who analyzed in, say, this construction, um, maybe I'll, I'll summarize this as saying that the oil class of these guys is zero sporadically. I mean, it's not quite to say that these are isolated ratios. They do have some limit points, but it's not like you get whole intervals of gain surgeries um, where this oil class is zero. Um, so in particular, inside the class of alternating knots, there's the class of two bridge knots, which is, I think, maybe the best studied class of knots after torus knots, or maybe even the more. Um, and uh, we don't know. So, um, so unknown if all, all uh, Dean surgeries on, well, I was going to say two bridge knots, but in fact, even this knot have left orderable fundamental group. So we really just have much less uh, understanding. And there are other uh, you know, things we heard something about yesterday uh, related to, to foliations. I mean, there's other ways that you get universal circles. Question, yes? Um, well, it depends on like what P and Q are congruent to mod something or another. I mean, so, so um, I mean, the usual way we'll think about this, um, yeah. sorry, I should erase this. So if we're thinking about our possible Dane fillings, so each choice of, of curve, you know, like primitive element of the homology, the boundary, so we kind of parameterize by, you know, just the circle. Um, and so by sporadic, I mean, it looks something like isolated point, isolated point, isolated point, limit point, isolated point, isolated point. Maybe there's some other limit point. Hmm? Well, yeah, that's right. So it really few, that's right. So in contrast, I should say, so what we know, um, this is work of Rasmussen and Rasmussen. Um, uh, we know that uh, the set of um, L space or non L space fillings uh, is uh, an interval in this setting. So if the conjecture is true, then what we want to be showing is that, you know, everything, all the slopes in say this interval, every single one of them is, has left orderable fundamental group. Um, and what we're getting is we're getting, you know, some small, relatively isolated. Um, and, you know, so, I, and we don't know, for example, that, um, you, know, there's no, you know, there's no analog of this theorem here um, in the context of left orders. Uh, there's no there's no theorem that says that like the range of left orderable slopes is an interval. I mean, maybe not so the, this same interval, but right now I was saying that there are other ways, there are other things that give you actions on universal circles, like quasi geodesic flows, pseudo Nossov flows, uh, 
tight essential laminations with solid porous guts, um, Buring triangulations. Um, th those are all well and good, but, but so far no one has ever really used those to concretely produce left orders. Um, you know, the, the cases where, where you know something's left orderable by, by using something related to foliations, it involves writing down a foliation explicitly and computing its oily class. But that just may mean that, you know, we haven't, those other things are harder to understand. But, uh, so maybe before moving on to the second technique, besides foliations, I should ask this question. I mean, I presume the answer to this question is no, but somehow that doesn't help me prove it. Um, uh, does every non L space uh, have a taut foliation where the oil class is zero? Um, I don't, as I said, I don't think this is likely, but I know of no. Okay, so the other main technique, I'm trying to figure out which, which board am I supposed to be racing? Uh, the other main technique is more elementary than, than the one involving foliations. There's this black box involving the construction of the universal circle and so on. Um, uh, this, 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 yes. In the statement of the pointer, it says that the observation is dynamically. Oh, but so, so, right. So, um, sorry. So, so here, Something like the work of Delman and Roberts, you know, it constructs um, foliations in families. Like they basically, there's basically one foliation that adjusted near the boundary works for all Dane surgeries on this knot. And for that family of foliations, their oil class vanishes sort of sporadically. However, these things could well, and some of them surely do, have other top foliations that are kind of not part of the family where they might have oil class zero. Uh, other questions? So could it be that the space conjecture is about top coordinatable foliation would be vanishing? Yeah, to the best of my knowledge, yeah, yeah. I, I, I expect the answer to this is no. I, I'm not sure why I expect that really just, um, but, uh, but yeah, it could be. Yes? So the, the show is like, for like these parameters, or they show in the other cases, it's non-zero as well. No, they show it is zero. I mean, this is something you can concretely calculate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for this, like the kind of families, so 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 I mean, her, her work is really focused, I think, on, on on original construction of Roberts, looking at foliations and manifolds of fiber over the circle. Um, in that case, she says exactly when the oil class is zero. So you actually compute from the branch surface? Yeah, yeah, you can definitely compute this for the branch surface. Okay. Um, you know, because I mean, you're, you're asking, does the tangent bundle, so if you're, you know, you know, you have the tangent bundle to the foliation, you're just asking is, does that have a section, mm -hmm. right? And so that's something you can, uh, you know, orient the sectors and get some class and check, yeah. Oh yeah, okay. So the second main technique, so the first was tool was branch surfaces. The second tool, is representations to the Lee group PSL2R. Um, and of course, PSL2R had acts um, on, well, I guess I'd think about it as the boundary hyperbolic space or projective line. Um, and so in particular, it gives you an action on a circle, an analytic action on a circle by Mobius transformations. Um, and if the oil class of this action vanishes, then it lifts um, to an action on the line, um, which is to say a homomorphism to the Lie group PSL2R tilde. So this is the universal central extension of this group. Um, and I mean, you know, this point is this thing is not simply connected. It's just a universal covering Lie group. Um, this group is not linear. It's not a group of matrices, which is a little bit annoying, but. That, you know, it's a perfectly reasonable object. So, so this, you have the subgroup of the group of homeomorphisms of the line, type two, kind of type two things. Um, and uh, so independently, uh, Ying Hu and An Tran, um, they use arcs 
of these representations to order families, the left order I1 for families of three manifolds. Like for example, maybe something involving gain surgery, something involving branch covers. Um, it's not maybe necessary at the moment to, um, I'll say the result along these lines, but a more recent one that's stronger. Um, Sorry, David, what do you mean by ops? Sorry? What do you mean by ops? Arcs. Yes. Oh. So the thing is, you see, when you have a manifold, <laughs> when you have a manifold with torus boundary like this, like the not exterior, then you should expect, if you have any PSL2 RFs at all, um, you should expect them to be sort of a one-dimensional real algebraic set. Um, so in particular, they come in nice deformable families. Um, and then if you're looking at something like a family of manif manifolds obtained from the exterior, like Dane surgery, um, you can hope to use some collection of points on that arc um, to uh, give you interesting representations of the Dane fillings. Um, so this is kind of, yeah, like a kind of character variety type story. Um, so- uh, It's just like a line inside. The yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm going to draw a picture here, just so so uh, motivated by by that work and also um, work of Vukoy from the early part of this century. Um, Mark Hall and myself uh, sort of um, we studied um, the following picture. So we call this the translation extension locus. So what is this? So you, we're looking at homomorphisms from so the setting is now, um, maybe I'll give it a different name, N, whose boundary is a torus. So something like this, not exterior here. Um, and then, so you look at homomorphisms um, from the fundamental group of N to this group G tilde, um, PSL to R tilde. Uh, and, you know, we could, given such a, representation, we can restrict it to the boundary um, and uh, look at the image of this over here. You know, if we wanted to be fancy, we could mod out by conjugation. Wait, what's, what's G tilde? G tilde is the group PSL2 R tilde. Okay. So this is the, this, this concretely, um, this is the subgroup of homeo R consisting of lifts of elements in PSL2 R. Right, so we're looking at like the universal cover. Yeah, yeah. So G is PSL2. Yeah, so that's right. So basically, right, yeah. So I, I didn't give that a name. Um, but yeah, this is the this group. Um, and so then, you know, so this G tilde acts on the line. Um, every element uh, has a well-defined translation number, which is the width of the rotation number on the circle. Um, so we could look at the translation number uh, of, say, uh, a basis here, meridian, like this is, you know, the free group of, sorry, this is Z squared. Let's say generated by elements, mu and lambda or something. Um, we can look at uh, how mu and lambda translate on R because it's a pair of numbers, but to be fancy, um, I'm gonna think about that as like a cohomology class. Um, and so, so I think we need a picture. Uh, I knew that was gonna happen. So let's uh, let's look at this. What this actually is for the trefoil knot. So, oh, I I don't promise I'm going to get the right. I'm going to draw a picture for the right-handed trefoil or the left-handed trefoil. Anyway, so let's take M is the exterior of trefoil, um, and here is the picture. So the image. You take this thing and you look at its image here. That's this extension locus. Um, it's basically you know, representations on the boundary that extend into the, the manifold. And so, okay, so here we are in the cohomology of the boundary torus, drawing my integer lattice points. <laughs> um, maybe let's make this the origin. Um, and uh, well, if we're going to use the standard. And the normal way to do this or not, we take the meridian 
to be this way and the longitude to go around that way. That's like the dual basis. Okay, so, so basically all I'm doing is I'm, I'm given a, a homomorphism from pi one of M to G tilde. I just evaluate that homomorphism on my peripheral curves, mu and lambda, and I look at the translation numbers of those actions. And then I just plot. Um, and so this turns out to be what you get. Um, so this is the extension locus. Um, and, okay. Um, and, uh, I mean, it turns out that all of these, you know, various phenomena here have, have meanings, which I won't really talk about. Um, like these places where it sort of dead ends on this axis, um, these correspond to roots of the Alexander polynomial on the unit circle. Um, but the, the main thing you get out of this picture is um, ways to order uh, Dane fillings um, on, on, a, on our knot or branch covers over the knot. So, um, you know, the thing is, see, if you're, if you're doing the Dane filling, not readable. So if we're filling, you know, the curve P mu plus Q lambda, um, I guess if I'm writing it, I, mean, I want to, I feel like more like, well, who cares? Um, so if we're doing the Dane filling here, uh, we could look at the line in our cohomology, which kills this element. So we can look at the line here. This is the line so of our elements of cobalt of phi, uh, where phi of p mu plus q lambda is zero. Um, and for some confusing reason, um, this line has slope minus p over q. Um, but the point is that if this um, line here meets my translation extension locus. That's going to give us a um, homomorphism to G tilde, which factors through to this Dane filling. Um, and so you see then from this picture that we're going to get a huge range of orders on Dane fillings. Question? Yes. So the yellow thing is like a card of representation, right? Yes, exactly. Okay. And like, so it goes like this, and then this continues and starts on the other. So, so, like, so it goes like this, and it stops. So these are segments. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And, and the other correspond to other representations or, or other. I mean, so I, I mean, I, I should have maybe said. So the reason this 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 thing has kind of this pattern, I mean, there's some symmetries to this picture, um, and part of the symmetries are just the, the symmetry this way is just because if you have one lift to G tilde, you always have a bunch by looking at some homomorphism that goes to the center of the extension. So um, you know, in this case, in this particular case, the first cohomology of N is just Z um, generated by the meridian. Um, and so that's why we see this sort of translational symmetry here. And then the sort of dihedral-like symmetry that comes from, well, you can kind of flip the line over. There's, you know, th this group has an outer, uh, G tilde has an outer automorphism, which corresponds to reversing the orientation of, of the line. Um, so that's why you get this picture. So, the, so in particular, like this point and this point, downstairs in PSL2R, these are the same representation. Um, but you know, we're really interested in, in G tilde because we want the order. So that's why we've unwrapped it kind of like, like this. Um, and so you see here, then you get a whole range of slopes. Um, so, so this then here will allow us to left order uh, any Dane filling um, with PQ in, um, okay, now I'm gonna get confused. So everything in here is good. So it's from like infinity slope down to zero. Then, okay, we get down to this. Um, and then, uh, okay, eventually the line doesn't hit anything anymore. So, so, and that's, okay, I got to reverse the sign. So I, I believe this is, allows us to order every Dane filling from minus infinity to one, um, which in fact, in this case is actually the best possible result. This, these are the, 
nine L spaces. Uh, but in general, uh, these pictures get very complicated. Um, we have many in our paper. Um, we have many uh, pictures of them. Yes. So minus infinity and one i is, that, is that exactly the L space field energy. For this, for this example, yes. Typically, that's not what happens. So typically, we do we do quite a bit less than that. So for actually for the three files, uh, the left audible that feeding raise raise the L space. Then. Yes, that's right. That's right. So in all, yes. yes, exactly, exactly. Um, but even for other simple examples like um, uh, the figure eight knot or the minus two three seven pretzel knot, um, this will not get you the full expected range. So what's the limitation of this thing is like that can be well of course one thing this picture could just be empty that that is that is a that's a possible that, that, that's a major limitation when that happens yeah. um but but all but sometimes so maybe, maybe I mean this is maybe a natural point so look at something called the minus two three seven pretzel knot yeah my favorite yeah good <laughs> um so this is an interesting knot because it has two Dane surgeries which give you lens spaces. So things with finite fundamental group, things that are not left orderable. It's like maybe the simplest example of this phenomenon. So then the picture here, when I draw the picture, I'm going to just kind of draw a fundamental domain because there's not, you know, it's got this repetitive pattern. Um, and I'm going to kind of skew the aspect ratio because I, otherwise I won't be able to fit it in. But it looks something like, this, this, skips one, this, skips one more, that. Um, this, this, skips one more. Oops, so that was supposed to skip one. Something like this. Um, and from this, um, uh, you'll see you can, you know, by looking at these lines, uh, this allows us to order left order surgeries in the interval from Um, minus infinity up to six. Um, however, uh, the non-L space fillings are in the range minus infinity up to nine. Um, and so uh, these, these arches don't go up far enough. And so between, between six and nine, what are, is like there are orderings on the on the fundamental group of the feeling that do not come from an order. We presume, well, if they have them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, sorry, a PSL2R representation. Yeah, there are no PSL2R representations in that range. In, 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 in the, of the feeling. Or of the feeling. I guess there could be PSL2R representations. They just don't lift the PSL2R. They, they, I, um, so we do know that some, so there's like this mystery interval from six to nine. So Hughes' work shows that there are some uh, top foliations of oil class zero that give us some additional orders in that interval from six. Sorry, so 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 the so like we had method, you know, the PSL2R tilde method, um this doesn't handle the interval from six to nine. We do know some of the fillings in this range are left orderable by work of Hugh. Um because by using these um top foliations of oil class zero. Um, in particular, I believe there's a, a family of fillings converging to nine that are left order. Yes. Why are the yellow curves nine? Oh well, so the, but so so for the trefoil, uh, this is because the group is very simple and these are actually straight lines. Here, these are not actually straight lines; they're just close to straight lines. Um, and there are other examples um, where where the things are very far from straight lines. Where you have all sorts of weird curvy stuff. Um, these pictures can be very complicated. So they're not. Yeah, they're not. There's nothing analytic in, in those range. That's right. Yeah, well, we know there's nothing in PSL two R tilde, which I think is the same. But we know, and they accumulate to nine. Oh, there are other orders. So, so Inhu showed that are non are there are orderable if there are LO fillings. Um, which accumulate to nine, and this is coming from top foliations with oil class zero. 
Right. Yes. So, so we're like the, for L space slopes, we have this convexity result, right? So yes, and there's no such convexity result. There is no convexity. We don't know any convexity results. No, no. No, no. I mean, if the conjecture is true, there have, in some sense, it follows <laughs> that the set of orderable slopes is, is an interval. Yeah. Um, but we have no even local statement that, you know, if you have one, you can perturb it. That, that stuff is all very mysterious. I mean, except if you're in some kind of situation um, like this group G tilde, where you basically have algebraic geometry to help you out um, and, and give you deformations. Yes. So in this step, you say that you get a representation from the empty link to tilde plus tilde, so you will get a point on the locus. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Then we are, it's the interval six nine also the question you asked at the beginning that if I want to get the portable if I want it, I will inject you if it plus is one tilde, so the object. No, because no, it could be other. There could be other orders of that form. They're just not going to come from this analytic group. Like, so back these things here also come from homeomorphisms, whips of homeomorphisms on the circle. Just not the analytic. They're just not the analytic kind, right? So there's a lot of mileage you get out of this. Um, uh, I was going to, by more time, I mentioned some recent results of mine with Jake Rasmussen on uh, branch surfaces, uh, sorry, on branch covers, but maybe skip that. Um, uh, but I, I should say this is not, uh, well, we already see here that, um, um, yeah, this is sort of not a, not a universal map. Okay, so, um, so I, I had here the minus 238, minus 237 pretzel. Um, we don't know how to handle everything in this range. Um, that, that's sort of embarrassing. I think this is even more embarrassing. So for the figure eight exterior, um, we know that if P over Q is in the interval from minus four to four, uh, filling is left orderable. Um, uh, we also know that if it's an integer, Q equals one by filling is left orderable. I believe that's all we know. Or no? Uh, yeah, there was Oh, sorry, you're right. Yes. Okay, sorry. This this has been handled by zone. Yes. Never mind. Good. Thank you. I was going to mention his results, but I didn't have time. I should have realized that. Yeah. Great. Brilliant. Um, and uh, so anyway, just to end, um, you know, kind of concretely with some challenges. So in uh, my paper, uh, a few years ago, I looked at this from computational perspective. So I went out and dug in the couch cushions and found um, about 307,000 um, such hyperbolic three manifolds. Um, and uh, it turns out these break out down as 47% uh, are L spaces. Um, Fifty-three percent are not, uh, and then using these two techniques, um, I was able to show that, um, well, that we've been talking about of the non-L spaces, at least ninety-nine point six percent have top foliations, um, and at least forty-nine percent um, are uh, left orderable. Uh, and on this side, um, it's able to show that 77% are not left normal. Of course, the conjecture tells us that we should all have top foliations. Everybody should be left normal. But uh, this was the best I could do, uh, which means in particular, there's many concrete examples of just group presentations where we know they should have left orders. We have no techniques to, to produce them. Um, so my hope is then that some of you can apply some different techniques to, to actually find, find uh, additional orders on these three medical groups. So the dot positions you constructed them using uh, that's surface. That's right. Yep, that's right. That's right. Yep. That's right. Uh, that's right. Uh, 
Rational homology spheres. Oh, he's all rational homology spheres. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I've always been talking about that in this. Yeah. How many of them come from that feeling of not competence? Yeah, some. Um, not a huge number. Uh, I would have to check. I guess 30 to 60,000, maybe. A lot of them have more homology than, and they're like their homology isn't cyclic or something. So, so not so the answer to Triangulations. Triangulations. Okay. So, anyway, that's, that's all I have time to say. Um, and also, I think all I wanted to say. So, let me stop there. Uh, thank you for your attention. More questions? Do you think your method can be extended to that feeling, for example, on uh, links, for example, two components instead of that one? Oh, I mean, there's no, yeah, there's no particular reason that, I mean, this is kind of a formal setup. Um, uh, you could certainly, certainly do this for links. Um, it's not clear, you know, how you would understand the sort of resulting picture, uh, but if you could, yeah, absolutely. So, question is, uh, the construction looks like, hey, for non so do they have any some connections? But yeah, no, I mean, this is, this is basically part of the real locus of the a-polynomial curve. I mean, yeah, that is very much. And how do you does your program that are not non leftward? Right. So that's that's the same way. Basically, you show any group is not left orderable. So, um, you know, you base you, you essentially try to find the positive cone instead of all things that are bigger than the identity. Mm -hmm. So you say, okay, I've got two generator group. Well, we might as well assume A is bigger than the identity. Maybe B is bigger than the identity. Well, if I have a relator that only involves A and B and not their inverses, I now have a contradiction because I have one is bigger than one. Mm -hmm. Okay, so B is not bigger than the identity. So B is less than the identity. Well, what about A times B? Okay. Anyway, you just sort of like- Yeah, that's what a human does. So that, you're saying yeah. that you're, you're, you, you can write a computer- Yeah, yeah, well, it's, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know how humans do it, to be honest. I don't know how to do this by computer. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I never sit there and like try to non left order a group by hand. That seems to me just like wow, um, beyond my abilities. No, um, and, and you know, so and the, and the point is that you know, to be able to do this, you need to be able to solve the word problem in your group, which you can because it's a hyperbolic three manifold, you have matrices. Mm -hmm. Um, and so you know, you want to check is some element the identity, you multiply out the matrices. Okay, the matrices up, you know, maybe you only know them up to some slight fuzz, but there are ways around this and exact arithmetic. And well, not we don't use that, but um, yeah. So, so, but that that part is in some sense, you know, the same as uh, any other sort of proof that something's not left order. Um, and, and you know, the, the problem it's all very ad hoc. I mean, like it depends on what group presentation you start with. For whatever reason, starting with presentations with a fair number of generators and short relators is better than looking at minimal presentations by a substantial margin, um, which is not again how a human would do it. I would have always like, but uh, but yeah, that's that's how it's done. You know, so such means um, rational homology three sphere. So just that the first homology is finite. It's closed manifold. The closed hyperbolic manifold um, with. Uh, Finite first homology. Yeah, I had a question about like how to show like something is not non left of that. So, could you have like something generated by two elements, um, like related, I don't know, like size n? Yep. How long does it take to like find the element? Right, right. I mean, so it's some sense, I think basically you're, we sort of have to look out to words of length n over two. Right. I mean, on any scale below that, the ball looks like these are really. The way I think about this, you're looking at, you know, the ball and the Cayley graph, and you're just staring at that thing and trying to divide it up into the stuff that's positive, the stuff that's negative, which means you're trying to find a subset of this ball, which is closed under multiplication, and every element is either in that set P, the positive cone, or it's inverses. You're trying to divide up the ball into two pieces, satisfying this relation that, that is closed under multiplication. And so you're basically just looking through all finite subsets of this in, in some more efficient way than that to see if there are any. So in particular, you need to be, I mean, the free group is of course left orderable. So, so you need to be at a scale where you're starting to see relations. Um, so you know, if, if your relators have like 30, you know, get the ball of radius 10, your Cayley graph just looks like the free group. And so the, you're not gonna see any, any contradict, you're not gonna see any. But, but as soon as you can see something, you see it. 
Well, I mean, I, you know, there's 23%, I couldn't do it all. So, you know, that the, no, the balls of course grow exponentially in the radius because we're in a hyperbolic group. Um, and at some point, you just, the computer gets tired. There's 100,000 elements in this ball. It just sits there trying things and it just sort of sits there. And eventually it says, I think there's one, you know, um, it's very ad hoc. I don't think there's an order. I mean, like, you know, the, it turns out it's one of these things that like, if it works, it tends to work fairly quickly. Um, and if you start getting to the stage where you're kind of adding one more element in the positive cone every iteration, it's probably going to succeed and, and build, you'll build the positive cone in that ball. So you should stop it early. But I said, this is all heuristics. It's not. I mean, again, when it, when it works, it generates a, a rigorous proof that the group's not left orderable. But um, uh, its method for finding that proof is kind of heuristic search. How many hours of computation were needed uh, to run this experiment? Uh, somewhere between 10 and 100 CPU years. <laughs> no, it's not on a cluster, yeah. Hey, no other questions? Thank the speaker again.